Okay. Always buckle up when you're vlog driving. All right, taking a little taking a little night cruise here. Doing some soul searching. I'm taking you guys with me. And the whole idea of soul searching is to get somewhere to actually find your soul <laughs> to discover your soul and figure out what the fuck's going on. I've always been in philosophical thinking since I was very, very young, but uh, I got addicted to drugs and alcohol pretty quickly, like from 13 on to like 24 when I finally quit. And now I'm 30 years, 30 years, over 30 years, I think. I don't even count anymore but, but a lot of soul searching a lot of mind traffic <laughs> I can't see my speedometer because I got my camera I'm going I can see it now I'm going 55 dude right on my freaking ass <laughs> I haven't soul searched enough obviously but um, I'm just um, but I've been doing this soul searching thing for a long time and introspection and philosophical thought and just I love it it's part of my songwriting which is what this channel is about my band Broken Poets if you're not familiar with us but um, my music is directly influenced by my recovery and my growth through the years and but like I said you you hope to get somewhere when you're recovering. You're looking for that light at the end of the tunnel, and I finally feel like I've reached that point in my life where I can. Uh, I just, I just actually feel good. You know, I feel good about my work. I feel good about my career. I feel good about my self, which is unbelievable. You know, but it took years and years of introspection and self-doubt and insecurity and just massive anxiety and uh, was diagnosed with bipolar actually diagnosed myself with bipolar <laughs> my therapist put a framed the the note I sent to her on her wall that described manic depression or bipolar exactly so she was thrilled that I wanted to get I went in there hoping she would give me meds but that was probably 25 years ago and I don't know I have a whole new philosophy on that I still I guess I have if it's called an illness I don't know I just see I'm just excited a lot of the time and very creative and then sometimes I'm really depressed why does it have to be some freaking label and a lot of it I see now uh, was in my own making, which I want to, um, I just want to explain a few key insights that I've had, um, that have really, really helped, because I, I keep thinking, <laughs> if I were to go back, if I could go back the way I am now and talk to me back then, I could have saved myself so much time, or I guess that's the question, would I have listened? It'd be totally honest, probably not. If it's me, I'm very stubborn, and that's just my um, slow burn. But um, I'm there now, and if I could go back, right, you know, all the self-help gurus that I found back then were all, like, academics and either, you know, a lot of soul grifters and just the whole thing in the 90s was a self-help movement, but it was a lot of people making money off of it, selling books. And there's a lot of good stuff in there but and from most of the academics, but they didn't really understand what it was like to feel um, the struggle, you know, which 
so I've had this channel for a couple years and I know a lot of you can relate to it with me but um, so finally making some progress and and uh, I have one key insight to share with you tonight I want to share about my new record coming out but I want to tell you what inspired that record for the last five years what I've learned and um, so you can kind of compare the lyrics to it but But the other thing is just something I've, a conclusion I came to recently that actually having addiction problems, no matter what they are, can be a blessing in disguise if you can, you know, find your way through it and quit. If you can, you know, stop, what it forces you to do is to look inward. And, and the reason I say this is because nobody gives a shit to look inward. If you have no problems, why look inward? Nobody, you know, basically people just go about their lives and don't have to look at themselves very carefully, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of people with a lot of, you know, these behavior patterns that they brought on when they were kids. And uh, they could live a lot better lives and be a lot more efficient in their lives, but they don't care to look at themselves because they think they're perfect. Their egos are locked in and that's it. So when you have an addiction, you're forced to either look at yourself or that's it. You're done. You know, by the time you've gotten to a point where you're going to quit with any addiction, whether it's drugs, alcohol, and I don't really think any drug is different. If you're addicted, you're addicted physically, psychologically. You can say your drug's harder to quit than others. I was on all sorts of different things. Whatever flavor I could find that, you know help me to numb myself so but if you uh, are forced to look at yourself and I was I've been into it I, I got it actually addicted to that into self-help and you know discovering all these uh, <laughs> pathways that I take and that were off course all the neurosis all the bullshit until finally now I just feel so much better so that's one key insight if you have an addiction you're going to have more of an advantage if you can in your life if you can you know pull it through it takes a lot of freaking work and a lot of self-honesty and then the other key insight that i came to over the last five years and so this key insight that brought about this record is is something that just changed my whole perspective on life and it's going to sound really freaking obvious but it's it is obvious and that's why you never even you know, consider it or think of it or apply it to your life and look at it as a reference point. But it's uh, just looking at your life from a vantage point of survival and that every single behavior you have is based on your survival. And right there, you're, you know, I already lost you, but I'm telling you, it's true. And if you start to, you, you got to sort it out yourself. You got to, you know, Peter Gabriel says you got it's digging in the dirt. You got to get down in the dirt, and get dirty, and really admit to yourself a lot of your patterns. But here's how I laid it out in my mind, and just a rough sketch. And you got to fill in the blanks. But uh, look at it this way: we're all born with this incredible, incredibly strong survival drive. Who knows if one survival drive is stronger than the other? Probably that we're all about the same. We all want to survive, starting off. And it's primal. It's it's in every you know facet of our, our lives. Our search for love is for survival. You just start going through the you know the list. Uh, you know the, just the basics: food, shelter, security, survival, um, and then love. Everybody's looking for love, and you know you're looking for love for to survive when you're young, even when you're old. <laughs> you're always looking for it meaning in life you're looking for survival sex your sex drive the survival of the, the species it, the more sex you have the more our species survives so it all goes back to survival now it's a primal thing that everybody kind of you know you're going to sit there and go I, of course I know I'm just trying to survive whatever and uh, it's just a natural thing I never even bothered to think about it but the problem is it gets it moves into your it moves into your psyche. Your uh, and look at it. Just uh, 
just say like um, a lizard. I gotta turn around here so there's some light. Look at a lizard on the wall. He's got fight or flight, right? Everybody knows fight or flight. Either runs, that's his fight to protect himself, or he freezes, and that's his flight to protect himself. Either way, he's trying to survive. So we all have that same fight or flight, but it, it moves into our psychology that our fight or flight, if you look at it, when you're fighting, you're trying to prove yourself. I'm going to do it. Your ego gets all involved. I'm going to succeed. <laughs> we're all we're all trying to succeed. It's a fucking competition from the beginning. We all start off wanting to be loved, and the only way to do it is to prove ourselves. And then you look at the um, culture that we're in. It's set up around survival. It's all to prove ourselves through either, look at the, the, the ways you go about it, are either academics or sports or business. Those three things. And, and basically, if you're not, if you're uh, creatively inclined, you're kind of fucked, you know? And I was creatively inclined. I was into philosophy, but they're not teaching philosophy. They're just teaching this basic academics. And I wasn't interested. Didn't feel like the truth for me. So I was, you know, stunted from the start. And I remember my very first survival strategy. The point is, everybody's got a survival strategy. And if you don't come up with one, your psyche's going to come up with one for you. So the idea is to be conscious of your survival strategy. If you can be conscious of it and say, you know what, I, you become conscious of the ones you have now and then you can alter them. And that's what I've been able to do over the last, you know, probably six months, really. I started to understand this a little bit and then just gradually have sussed it out. And that it takes, you know, each person has their own survival um, strategy, but they all go into those, you know, basic camps of fight or flight um, in that primal way, but it's in a psychological way where you're fighting for approval, trying to prove something, or your uh, the flight is, you know, you just shut down. That's where addiction comes in, and it's for sympathy. If you look at what you're trying to get out of addiction, is sympathy, and what do you get from sympathy? You're going to survive. You know, you might not be proving yourself. You're, you're a piece of shit. You've fucked up your life. But at least they'll feel fucking sorry for you. And that's, you know, when all else fails, you can't seem to prove anything. People turn to addiction and just say, fuck it. I'm just going to destroy myself. And I hope somebody cares for me. You know, take care of me. So there's a lot of victimhood going on. And <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it doesn't sound appealing but look at it this way when you look at it in this context of survival we survived it doesn't matter how fucking lame our uh, survival strategy was we survived I survived through you know I had all, all sorts of manipulations um, just endless neurotic behavior patterns that all were able to it, either to prove, ever since I quit drinking for the last 30 years, I've been trying to prove to survive. But before that, it was all looking for sympathy. And then when I couldn't prove, I, I'd revert back to looking for sympathy. And so I'm telling you, man, this is the fucking truth that nobody tells you, nobody teaches you this stuff. Leo's got videos about it. And you know, I'll put a couple links of his down there that help me. But, uh, but this has led to the record I've always dreamed of making. I've finally been able to get out of my way and write some songs that aren't so introspective and just, you know, reflecting on life and this whole understanding I've come to. And um, anybody who isn't into, you know, this introspection and, and um, philosophical thinking and and has never had problems with addiction and had to face these things about themselves. They've all given a thumbs down. This guy's an asshole. <laughs> they've all they've already left. But if you're still here and you like this channel, post me you know your story down below. Share with me what you've been through, what you think of my insight. If you think it helps at all. If you're younger, if you're older, like me, and just you know if some light bulbs going off from what I'm telling you. Take a month or two and just sit there and look at all your bullshit 
and once you work it through and feel the emotions that are tied to it, uh, you just start to feel so much better. And then you can have st survival strategies because you got to have one. We all want to survive, and uh, you got to have one to survive. So you got to have an ego to survive. I'm not one of these guys that are going to want to erase my ego. I like my ego, but I'm aware of it. I'm aware that it, you know, that's how I function in the world and relate to people. There's nothing wrong with having an ego, but you have to be conscious of your ego and aware of what uh, kind of bullshit it plays. We're massive self-deception machines, and we're just like constantly deceiving ourselves to keep these survival um, strategies going. And um, once you see it, you're like, holy shit. Then you start to, you know, of course, you start to look at everybody else and go, ah, there's their strategy, there's their strategy. There's, you're either a pleaser, which I've been, trying to please, or you're a rager, there's ragers out there, oh, whatever, man, cynical. All the, every single behavior pattern, conspiracy theories, survival strategy, uh, cynicism, eh, negativism, just regular assholes, trolls that are putting these thumbs down for no fucking reason. And when they can't be identified, cowards, you're, you're, it's a survival strategy. Stop being a coward. Face your own bullshit. <laughs> All right. I've gone on a rant. It's way too long. I'm releasing the record. It's uh, Broken Poets, Frontier Motel. That took me, like, the last two or three years to, you know, it's taken forever, it seems like. But we got uh, amazing players on it. Um, Lana's playing piano. I've even, uh, she helped me uh, learn how to play piano. I learned my first song on piano. So that's going to open up the record. And it's only going to be available here. I'm not doing the streaming bullshit anymore. I'm tired of all that. Nobody buys shit anyway. And I'm going to be just releasing it on my website. But I'll put out a new video uh, describing the record you know, what's on it, what the songs are about, give you a little taste of it, and give you a link, and uh, coming up here in January. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, we made it through the drive safe, if you can even see me, um, I thought these lights were like gonna shine on my face periodically so you could tell there was somebody here, I'm gonna get up to the green light here so you can see me, but i um, sorry I've been gone so long, but I don't, I don't do this for a living, as you can tell. But um, <laughs> I'm just here to share my story in hopes that it will be helpful to somebody else coming up who doesn't listen either, doesn't listen to anybody. Listen to yourself. It's all in you. You're the problem. But it's not really a problem. You're just surviving. Can't blame yourself for that. Unless you're just a total asshole, then you're just a, you know, maybe you're lost. But if you can have some, you know, empathy for others and... You know, self-honesty, you'll see we're all full of shit and the sooner we start to recognize that and become conscious of it and become aware of how we're surviving on this planet become a lot more um, be a much better place for all of us Happy Thanksgiving um, thanks for listening subscribe just for, you know so I know you're out there make some comments and um, I'm not making any money on the, this page, just basically want to share my story. And if you like what I'm sharing, let me know. All right. Enjoy. Oh, here's the light. <laughs>